Well, some of the fake electors in Georgia are going to be facing prosecution except one, Lieutenant Governor Burt Jones. Prosecuting Attorney Council Executive Director Pete uh, Scandalakis, who appointed himself the special prosecutor, decided Jones wouldn't be charged in the Trump election subversion case. We told you in May how some black attorneys filed a lawsuit against Scandalakis to force them him to perform a non-discretionary duty. Attorney Wayne Kendall joins us from Fayetteville, Georgia, to discuss the decision not to uh, not to prosecute the lieutenant governor of Georgia, uh, saying that, well, um, you know what, doesn't apply to him. Attorney Wayne Kendall joins us right now. Um, Attorney Kendall, glad to have you here. So uh, they're letting a lieutenant governor uh, off the hook in Georgia, huh? Well, Roland, he's not completely off the hook yet. Uh, what happened recently last Friday was that the prosecutor who appointed himself after Fonnie Willis got disqualified decided that he was not going to prosecute uh, the Lieutenant Governor Burt Jones. But we have a case in court that's still pending that says that he is disqualified from even making that decision because he has a conflict of interest, uh, actual financial conflict of interest involving the fact that the Lieutenant Governor, as the president of the Georgia Senate, is the only person that can move a bill to the floor of the Senate to pass the budget for his agency, which includes his salary. So he is directly financially dependent upon the lieutenant governor to approve his budget every year. And we are saying that that disqualifies him from being the prosecutor or investigating the lieutenant governor because the lieutenant governor is, in essence, his paymaster. So... um how many other folks, I mean, is the special prosecutor, uh, has he, how many folks has he indicted? Well, Pete Scandalakis is the person we're talking about. Pete has a history of non-prosecutions of governmental officials who get in trouble. Uh, he was the special prosecutor on the Rayshard Brooks case. If you remember that case, that case was where this individual was asleep in a car in a drive through and he was awakened by the police. He got in a scuffle with the police, grabbed one of the policemen's uh, scanner, uh, 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 taser. He was running away and got shot in the back. There's other cases. There's at least three or four other cases in Georgia where this particular prosecutor has non-prosecuted people who have shot other folks. For example, there was a sheriff's deputy that shot an individual in the courthouse because he wouldn't stop using his laptop in the courtroom. There was a scuffle in the in the hallway of the courthouse and the deputy shot the individual. He was indicted. The sheriff's deputy was indicted and Pete Scandalagas dismissed the case. There are other cases uh, similarly. So we knew that when he got appointed or he appointed himself, uh, that it was unlikely that he would indict the lieutenant governor because of the financial conflicts of interest. And he didn't have to appoint himself. He could have appointed probably over a thousand other people. Uh, the statute allows him to appoint retired judges, retired prosecutors, federal and state. He could have app appointed any number of private attorneys. Uh, but he didn't appoint anyone until after we sued him. And, when, and at that point, he appointed himself. And prior to him appointing himself, after he had been sitting on the case for 17, 18 months, we sent him an open records request and said, hey, tell us who all you have contacted. What lawyers, judges, retired, active have you contacted to take on this case? And this is 18 months after he was appointed to appoint someone after Funny Willis got disqualified. And he responded to our request to say that he had no written records whatsoever of actually attempting to uh, contact any prosecutors to prosecute this case. And then one district attorney over in Augusta uh, volunteered to take the case, but he wouldn't hire him either. So, so it was a pure and simple whitewash situation, but it's not over yet. So what's next? 
Well, what's next is that we're waiting on the judge in this case to determine whether or not he should be disqualified. And we had a hearing uh, to determine a motion to dismiss our case uh, last Monday, a week ago, this past Monday. And the judge has not ruled on that case yet. If he rules in our favor on that case, then we will go have a hearing on the merits and determine whether or not he is, in fact, disqualified because of his financial connections to the appropriation process that the lieutenant governor controls. All right. Well, let us know how the legal battle continues. We appreciate it. We will do. Thank you for having me. In 2016, Donald Trump said he would choose only the best people to work in his White House. Now those people have a warning for America. Trump is not fit to be president again. Here's his vice president. Anyone who puts themselves over the Constitution should never be president of the United States. It should come as no surprise that I will not be endorsing Donald Trump this year. His defense secretary. Do you think Trump can be trusted with the nation's secrets ever again? No. I mean, it's just irresponsible action that places uh, our service members at risk, places our nation's security at risk. His national security advisor. Donald Trump will cause a lot of damage. The only thing he cares about is Donald Trump. And the nation's highest ranking military officer. We don't take an oath to a king or a queen or to a tyrant or a dictator. And we don't take an oath to a wannabe dictator. Take it from the people who knew him best. Donald Trump is a danger to our troops and our democracy. We can't let him lead our country again. I'm Kamala Harris and I approve this message.